What's good, Double M family? It's your boy, Text the Bravo. I'm here today with June Marie. Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? We got a special interview for you guys today. So sit back, relax, take a cup, take a shot. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Ah, all right. So where to start? Where to start? Um, I'm not sure if you remember, but we did go to high school together. We <laughs> did go to high school together. Um, you graduated a year before me, though, so I'm not too sure if you remember me in high school. No? Nah? No, unfortunately, I don't. <sighs> I feel bad. No, nah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> starstruck. Starstruck. I understand you. I mean, like, you know how it is. Like, when you're like, um, nah, don't do me like that. Oh, it's when, cool. It's <laughs> cool. It's all right. Yo. When, you're, when you're like a senior, you know what I mean? You're just so more focused on like senior what's fever. ahead of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I understand like, 100%. You're not really looking at like, you know, underclassmen or like, you know, it sounds way more bad when I'm like explaining <laughs> But <laughs> It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound bad at all. Don't worry. So. After high school, where did your um, musical career begin? Oh, I have to ask. So how do you know me from high school? Like the hallways? Because yes, yes, and yes. I was pretty big. You're a very pretty girl. It's hard to forget you. Don't oh, worry. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was, those were my hurt days. So I Oh, okay. That. Here we go. The flattery. <laughs> the, the humble card. Those okay. Those my hurt days. The humble card. <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean, I, I've been doing music since I was... Um, well, technically, it depends because I wouldn't really consider myself like just a singer. I would consider myself like an overall artist. So, like, I've been writing since I don't know. I was like maybe eight years old. You rap too? No, mm. I mean we dibble and dabble now. Oh, ah, okay, you okay. Know, that's 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 new project talk. But um, for back then, I was just like writing poems, writing like my own little songs. Um, music for me has always been like mainly therapy. Mm. So. Um, I kind of just like live my life and then make music that helps me get through things or helps me like see things a different way or like even if it's just a good moment like to be able to put that into a song to make somebody else feel how I felt like I think that is like the funnest and the coolest part. That's beautiful. Music to help you get through things. That's what I use music for personally yeah. like whenever I, I have to get out of an angry mood I put on some vibes and I'm I'm a different person. Yeah. So I definitely respect that, and I love to hear that. Um, well, let's talk about your latest EP, um, Handle Me With Care. Handle Han With Care, yeah. Handle With Care. My, I apologize. I apologize. Um, that came out in 2020? Yes, yeah, correct. So where were you when you wrote that? Where was, What space were you in? And oh, man, I was in, like, a weird space. I mean, I, I guess a good musical space, but, like, I was, like, probably the most depressed I've ever been in my whole life. Man. Like, like, yeah, not to get deep. We no, no, go ahead, music. go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have the soundboard soon, don't worry. Um, But I was just going through a hard time. Like, um, you know, obviously the pandemic hit and it affected everyone some way, shape, or form. Um, And I was in a point, especially with my music in general, where, like, I wanted to make actual, like, uh, timeless records. And I wanted to make, mm. instead of just singles, I wanted to make a body of work that, you didn't have to skip. You could play it through from the beginning to the end. So Handle With Care is, like, really special to me because not only was it therapeutic for me, um, it made me kind of just realize what it's like to create a body of work so cohesive that um, every idea, fl like, flowed into the other. Um, and I think that that was, like, now looking back that I now I'm about to drop another project, I think that Handle With Care definitely set me up to do more intentional work um, following a theme. So the theme of handle with care was, you know, like obviously to handle yourself with care, but to also like because of the pandemic to really just like um, focus in on like what do you really care about, um, prioritizing yourself when you need to, uh, walking away when you need to, mm. and um, being able to like tap into, you know, a more vulnerable side of yourself. Because, I mean, we had all the time in the world during COVID. You know what I mean? To do that. So I tell you what. <laughs> I had too much time on my hands during COVID. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I think uh, I regret some decisions back then. But anyways, let's continue forward. I mean, I definitely wanted to say shout out to Jay Rose. Because that's, mm. that's my dog. Uh, him and I are like two peas in a pod. Like, name a better duo type yeah. of, of work in the studio. Mm -hmm. and, um, I can honestly say, you know what I'm saying? Our, our chemistry in the studio is, is very cool. Like... I'll I'll have an idea and he'll like amplify it to like mm. three four times bigger than the idea that's awesome. we had. Yeah, so it's like super dope working with him because we just bounce off each other's energy. And, yeah, um, definitely like 
because of that chemistry, like we worked on the second follow up project uh, that's about to be out soon. So, mm. okay, that's awesome. So, with music being so therapeutic to you and being almost like an escape, what does it actually take for you to sit down and make a song? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, multiple things, I guess. Um, it depends. Like I would say, like the the most intense thing that would ever have to happen would be like an actual life experience mm. because um, I make my best music like when I'm going through something. Mm. So for me, it's like, uh, what would it take? It, life experience definitely would be number one. And then um, I would say following that would be like definitely beat choice. Um, okay. I can kind of hear a song already laid out prior to me even putting words to it. If, if the beat is like structured or if the beat has like, you know, a certain melody that I find really catchy or something like that. Like it's kind of like a, a sixth sense kind of yeah. like I can feel like the vibrations of mm -hmm. the beat and I'm like, I could, I could resonate with that. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but no. I got melodies in my head. And then, you know, from there, like whatever I get, whatever energy I get from that beat ends up being, you know, either like a happy song or like a chill mm -hmm. song or I'm pissed song. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, it depends on like the mood of the beat. Um, but definitely, like I said, life experience, um, you know, it just depends. I can go in the booth and, like, write shit in, like, five, ten minutes or just freestyle. Lately, I've been doing a lot of freestyling, like, for the next, for the like, last EP I just finished up. Um, most of that were just demos, just going in the studio, cooking up every day, like, and then eventually we kind of, like, capped, capped recording demos because we had all these demos. So we're like, all right, like, what are we going to, how are we going to, pick from this pool of records demos and be like okay this is gonna be a representation of what we're gonna do next mm -hmm. so kind of like it's like a process you know but it just depends like the space i'm in really okay well you you brought up actual a question um well you brought up something that sparked a question in me i've always been curious on how artists choose the songs that they put into their projects so what do you think it takes for you to actually approve a song to get on a project for you? Um, well, first, it's got to be a hit, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, I think that's the first, the first and foremost because it is a craft, but, you know, when you take it to a high level, you want to monetize it, obviously, of course, and you also want to be able to, like, uh, create a vibe that other people would enjoy. So if it's catchy, you know, you already know off rip, like, that's going to do well, like, that's going to be something that other people should hear and things like that. Um, but I don't know. I would say, like, it depends the theme of the project, to be honest. Mm. Because okay. if not, you know, you just drop it as a single and it is what it is. Or you ha maybe have it more strategic. It's all strategic, to be honest. I mean, every artist is different, you know. But for me, I, like, I'm learning to be, especially with Hannah with Care, like, more intentional. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's just, like, following the theme. So, okay. you know, like, let's say you're making a project about, like, for example, Hannah with Care, for instance. It was all vulnerable music. Like, I'm not about to drop, like like you party know, music for it party music in the middle of the ep because yep. then you're gonna be like all right like what is she going through <laughs> you yeah know yeah I mean? yeah, like, yeah is she sad or is she trying is to get she, have a good time to turn up yeah like, okay i mean but that, nonetheless like that, that's why all in had um that's why the song all in on the project was a bonus track because it was um a little bit more like like up tempo um more like kind of like you're with your boo vibes and like I don't know. It was just, a, I didn't feel like it was necessarily a part of the storyline, but it still fit the theme on a relationship level. Okay. So I ended up putting that in as a bonus track. So sometimes I'll do it, but it'll purposely be separate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that's awesome. Wow. No, I appreciate that because you're giving us a lot of insight. I, I would have never known the process of an artist. Like mm -hmm. you said, you like if you make a song and it doesn't necessarily fit with the EP or the project that you have at the time that you're working on, you might just release it as a single to mm -hmm. gain some momentum or gain some attraction or give something to the people so they have something to listen to right. while you work on your, your, your project. That's awesome. So I know you used to live out here in Mass, mm -hmm. but you recently moved to D.C. Yeah. So how has that move impacted your career? Um. Well, I'll say first and foremost, it definitely makes you, like, more independent. Um, okay. You're kind of, like, forced into, like, you know, a new space where you have to um, figure your way out mm. and navigate your way through, I guess. 
Um, <clears throat> luckily, so far since I've been there, um, I've done two shows and nice. I've gotten to connect with other local artists. Their DC culture is like amazing, like musically, um, mm -hmm. very supportive. They they do things like every week for local artists, and I love that it's not just singers and rappers. It's spoken word. It's painting. It's you know, it's it's a mixture of everything in one place and. Um, I'm excited to see what else DC has for me and what what I'm gonna be doing out there. They actually just asked me. Uh, two people just actually just DM me since I've been out here. Like, hey, can you do this show? Nice. One was for like celebrating like um, Latino women or something like that for Mother's Day. Yeah. And then the other one uh, recently was also another spoken word event for Mother's Day, and they wanted to feature me as an artist and like pay me. And I'm like, damn, I'm not there. I'm not there, but it's all good. Like, um, you know, the fact that. I'm even considered, you know, and I haven't been out there in a long in a long period of time. Like, just makes me know, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to definitely take on this new venture and, like, see where it takes me. But so far, so good, you know, and I like that I'm not too far from home, so I'm going to always rep, you know, 508, like, where I'm from. But, yeah. <laughs> it's That's awesome. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> no, because I know a lot of, like, a lot of artists always complain that they have a hard time gaining traction or actually, like, getting like a good following base or a lot of viewers in their home city. But once they move or once they get out of town, <laughs> it's like a skyrocket. It's like they boom. And it's crazy. I mean, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's a little 50, 50. Okay. I can see why artists would think that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I have to agree with that mm. to, a, to a certain degree. Um, this ain't no shade on nobody either. It's just, you know. No, nah, speak your truth. It's, it's easier to support people you don't know, unfortunately. Damn. It's, it's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? I think we're all guilty of it, too, in one way, shape, or form. You can't you can't support everybody, even though yeah. you want to. Like, you know, as people, as, as humans, you know what I'm saying, sometimes we're a little bit narrow-minded or definitely biased to certain genres and you know yep. what I mean? So That's 100% true. You know, it's like, it is what it is. I try not to take it personally. You can't take shit personal in this business because, um, you know, you'll get disappointed real quick. Mm, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. you just got to keep going. All the, all the no's you hear, you, they'll eventually will be a yes. And I think that um, you won't know until you put yourself out there. So, um, like, the first show I did in D.C., like, I was terrified. I was like, damn. What happens, like you know, if I mess up, or you know, like they're not feeling me because I'm from I'm from Mass, and like you know, the music scene is a little different here than maybe in DC. You know, all those thoughts were running through my head, but I was just like, well, if I mess up, they're not gonna know because they don't know you. You know what I mean? And then like when you shift Smart. your perspective to that, it's kind of like when you dream, like you're presenting in front of your class and you're in a, you're in, a, you're in your underwear. Like uh, it's kind of like one of those things. Like, I was never in my underwear. Everyone else. I've was never in had those though. dreams before, but like I hear that it is funny and it helps people sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like when you're presenting, just imagine everyone in the underwear. I couldn't do it because I'm too goofy and I would laugh. <laughs> but like in my mind, like it was kind of almost that same logic. Like no one's gonna know if you messed up because no one knows your music. And in yeah. that sense, I shift like the the fear perspective into like an opportunist perspective, and I was like, well. If I do mess up, maybe I'll just freestyle, and they'll still fuck with it. You know what I mean? So then that, in that way, it kind of changed my mind. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I know um, I I own a, a, a pet care business, mm -hmm. so I know a lot of people have um, hated on me simply because they see me doing something good. And, like, I've seen other people say the same thing. Like, other people don't want to see you do better than they're doing but they still want to see you do good yeah. and yeah that's always been a uh something that has been eye-opening to me and stuff yeah. like that so um before we wrap things up what has been the most inspirational moment for you for music the most inspirational honestly i would say f uh failure hmm. failure for one, for many reasons, um, I would say like, on a like for example, Handle with Care came out during COVID, like you know, so everything was closed. Like, unfortunately, you know, Handle with Care is just now still getting recognized. I was recently just recognized on R and B Radar. Shout out to R and B Radar, by the way. Um, Shout out. I was just recognized by R and B Radar on their story and like gained like at least two thousand new listeners on Spotify because of that <laughs> shout out. You know what I'm saying? They shouted me on Twitter, everything. So it's just like they shouted me out from Sweet Murder for Sweet Murder that was on Handle with Care. And that that's crazy to me because that song came out three years ago. And I'm just now like that just happened to me last month. 
And I'm like, damn, like, I just released that song, like, three years ago, and it's just now getting, like, traction. So it kind of makes you, like, you hear all these stories, like, about artists releasing music, but not, it, it doesn't become a hit or on the radio till like, five, six years later. And you're like, well, damn, how the hell can that happen? But, like, that experience alone just made me realize, like, once you push shit out there, like, it's going to, it's kind of like, you know, pictures on the internet. Like, it's always going to be there. Like, you don't realize that as an artist because you're always trying to get better and you're always trying to keep your audience. But it's like, you got to stop sometimes and, like, get your flowers, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I would definitely say failure because, you know, when it came out in COVID, I wasn't doing shows like that. But also, like, you know, so I, hadn't, I ended up having to do a live album. So that that's on my YouTube channel. But that process was like... Oh, man, it was so difficult to, like, try to find the right space, try to find the right person to mix it. And then we had to remix the whole thing, like, three or four times because we didn't have the right equipment. And it was just, like, it was... it was Sounds like a hassle. It was my fault to a degree. And, like, in that sense, like, I had to be accountable for that for the future. But it made me realize, you know what I mean, like, how to do it better next time. And, like, mm -hmm. next time, what, what am I going to do or what am I not going to do? Because, I mean, no one predicted a pandemic. <laughs> so I had to, like, like because I had, you know me, like, you know how artists are. Like, they hook up at least for a year. Yeah. At least for a year. So in my mind, like, I was already making these records, and I'm, like, I never anticipated a, a pandemic, you know? So it kind of definitely messed up my whole marketing scheme. Shows were non-existent. I couldn't perform at shows. So... I mean, I take it as a blessing in disguise, though, because um, now that I'm in D.C., you know what I'm saying, I have all this catalog of music, and they don't care when it came out. They don't care if I mess up. They don't know. You know what I mean? They don't care. So, yeah. I mean, I would definitely say failure because it's definitely pulled, pulled me out of, like, uh, places to grow and, and shown me, like, what to do in, in the future and stuff like that. So. Okay. I like that. Um, now, you know, moving to D.C. and having different outreach what has that shown you, like, in advertisement lanes and getting your music out there to different people? What do you feel like you need to do next in order to expand or to grow? I think being out there and seeing <clears throat> the support that, that the other artists and people give each other has really helped me and, like, broaden my sense on community and, like, mm. actual personal presence. Um, I definitely think, like, doing more shows is definitely on my agenda and just being like physically more present. Like some people won't really fuck with you until they can put a face to your name. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, like even now, like you're over here, like she don't remember me from high school. She funny. I'm just <laughs> saying, bro, it's cool. Starstruck. Like, Starstruck. We now we cool, <laughs> I think, <laughs> but, um, definitely like putting myself out there more in person and, um, you know, just being more of myself online. Like, it's kind of hard to. I feel like TikTok culture kind of ruined that for most artists because now it's like you're not even trying to put out music to put out music. You're trying to sell, like, a whole, like, persona around that song, around that EP, and you have to sell that through TikTok. And it's, like, cool, but it's, like, it works for the artists that, that are that those type of artists and that can do it. But you force these artists who that might not necessarily be their image into mm. a whole nother realm of marketing where it's either they sink or they swim. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think like TikTok culture has kind of like, in some sense has been um, amazing in finding new music, finding new artists. And it's a great tool to connect people and learn things. But at the same time, it's also taken away the value of good music, underrated artists. You know what I'm saying? Who don't give a fuck about that, to be honest. Yeah. Who just want to make good music and, yeah. and have good fans, you know? Yeah. No, I think that's actually 100% true what you said because there are, are, I can think of so many songs off the top of my head now that I've actually found through TikTok mm -hmm. that I was like, yo, this sounds like a banger. And you go and you listen to it and only that specific part that's in the TikTok that clip, clip is, is what's popular. good. Yeah. And it's just like, damn. This was misleading. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to be here right now. Why am I listening to this song? So I it's definitely good marketing though. It, you can't knock it. It's mm, like it's like a love hate. Yeah. TikTok. No, exactly. It's it's a double edged sword, and sometimes you swing and you hit. Sometimes you swing and you miss. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a a lot to gamble with. I understand but what you're saying. I, I did want to add though. I think it's a great platform because yeah. it allows artists to expand their their um their vision to another platform instead of just Instagram or Twitter. It allows them to, you know, have another platform to have different fans and, and maybe give more of their personality. Yeah. 
Me, I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't think I'm like a TikTok type, but you know, we'll see. I'm always open for growth, but hey, TikTok just depends what it is. TikTok is a space for goofy people. Yeah, and I, I bet you have uh, enough personality to fill in that space. Don't I worry. I mean, I'm more of like I'm, my friends could go shy. Fine. I'm I'm not shy. Oh, I'm okay. Definitely I was about like, to say <laughs> I'm more of like an in person vibe. Like I don't uh, like to do shit for cameras. I don't like to do shit that feels fake or forced mm-hmm. or anything like that. And maybe that's why I struggle with it. Don't think too hard on it. Just yeah. just make the content and love it afterward, <laughs> yeah. okay? Yeah. So you've been talking about it, hinting about it here and there, but um, you said something about a, a new EP or some new work. Uh, yeah. What, uh, what information could you give Double M uh, today <laughs> oh, on man. this special interview for us? <laughs> hey, pay attention. Um, well, I'm going to look into the camera for this one. Um, so I, um, I am going to be releasing a follow-up project to handle with care and uh, I don't have a release date yet you know I can't give too much information away but um, you heard it here first I'm going to be dropping my follow-up pro- uh, EP called Careless mm. and uh, that's going to be out this summer at some point so cheers to that cheers to that uh, <laughs> you heard it here <laughs> careless careless I like that handle with care to careless hmm that's a different. That's a that's that's a different space. That's yeah. a different space. I feel like just, if you've been following my music exactly, like just like mic drop, because mm-hmm. I feel like if you've heard "Handle with Care," you can only imagine, like you know, what the follow up "Careless" is gonna be like. Sound like Hot Girl Summer to me. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, hey, that's what I'm talking about. You see, that's bit. what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited for the project? I really am. Um, when I, I honestly, this is the most fun I've ever had making music, um, nice. making this project, and um, it was definitely cool to like work with Jay Rose and collaborate because um, I just wanted it to be so different from Handle with Care. Handle with Care was like more vulnerable and like you know very reflective, and and this project is more like you know, I would say. Um, me being more comfortable with my femininity, me being more comfortable with myself, me not caring or giving a fuck about what people think of me or what I do, like more so focused on my happiness, my friends, the shit I love, the music, um, and just like celebration of life. That's that's awesome. And I love to hear it because I'm anticipating it. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I, I <laughs> can't you. wait. Don't worry. <laughs> nah, thank you for the, for the music. Um, well, moving forward... What would you like anybody on the Double M platform or any of your viewers to know to where they can find you and stuff like that? Well, uh, all my music is at June Marie um, on all platforms. So that would be like mainly Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, any of those sorts. You can definitely find my music. Um, June Musica is my uh, Instagram handle. Actually, all the links to all my music are in that bio, um, as well as my Twitter and YouTube channel. And um, yeah. You guys can find me at June Musica, uh, pretty much on any social media platform, um, and June Marie on our platforms. All right, awesome. Well, you heard it here first. New project called Careless coming soon. We don't know the exact date, but it will be here, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. I can't give y'all too much information. We just actually shot a video for one of the records, so y'all hear, y'all will hear something soon. We 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 chopping it up right now. Um, shout out to Architect. <laughs> All right, worry. Well, we love to hear it. You're here with Text the Bravo and June Marie and. Y'all have a good night at Double M. Thank y'all for having me. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to Double M. Please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe all the content that we're bringing at you. Double M to the moon.